Mark Zuckerberg touted Facebook as a, quote, proudly American company in his prepared remarks published ahead of his testimony before the House Judiciary Subcommittee yesterday. And the new TikTok CEO, Kevin Mayer, took the company, the comments, as a jab at the popular Chinese-owned app. He called on Facebook to instead focus its energy on fair competition in service to consumers rather than attacks shrouded in patriotism. Mayor also said TikTok will reveal how its algorithms work, calling on rivals to do the same. Joining us now to talk about all of this is Ben Smith, media columnist for The New York Times. Great to see you as always, Ben. Good to see you, Ben. Thanks for having me on. Of course. All right, so what do you make of this particular dust up and then reactions overall to the big tech hearings here? You know, I think TikTok is sort of playing a really bad hand pretty well, and Facebook is playing a stronger one badly, I guess is what I'd say. I mean, I think <laughs> yeah. that, um, you know, Facebook is in this very implausible way wrapping itself in the American flag when, you know, we all know, and in some ways it's kind of the glory of these tech companies that they are these transnational companies that don't recognize national borders that encourage this global conversation and have really kind of global ideas about what they are and always have. Um, you know, I think it's it's very late for fa for Mark and for Facebook to be trying to pre present themselves as this sort of you know American company, um, when in fact what they are is a global company that's subject to finding itself dealing with national regulation all over the place. Right. Um, and TikTok is really trying to give a lot of regulators what they actually want, which is essentially a way to regulate speech on the platform so that interfering in speech itself, but by getting some kind of transparency about what's going on. Yeah, I think it's really interesting. You're right, Ben, because, you know, F Facebook now is like, oh, we're this American company. I mean, five years ago, he was at dinners with, like, Xi Jinping, being, you know, asking him, you know, basically asking him to, like, help me name his son and all this other stuff, which was reported at the time, very clearly trying to gain entry into the Chinese market. However, I, I think you put it quite well that TikTok is playing a bad hand quite well because they're pointing, and I think rightfully, to data privacy concerns. Um, is Should that be conflated, you know, in, in terms of analysis on this? What do you think? I mean, I think that it's very hard for legislators to actually regulate speech. What you saw, you know, in the a lot of the questioning were these sort of off the wall, you know, my wife called me and asked me for Gateway Pundit and I couldn't right. find it on well, sort of like hyper partisan nonsense questions. Um, it just, and, and I think, you know, where you actually saw legislators agree across the aisle was much more on the anti-competitive concerns, right. which have a lot more to do with Google, a bit with Facebook, more with Amazon. So Facebook may skate, basically, because the American tradition doesn't allow any sort of regulation around speech itself. Um, but I do think that, the mo in some ways, the most interesting things in the media space would be about forcing just way more transparency of how speech is getting distributed. Yeah, I totally and what, agree. Is, what does that look like in practice, Ben? I mean, it means that if you, if, if, you know, if you asked me, like, why did this Gateway Pundit post totally dominate Facebook, I could literally tell you. Mm -hmm. yeah. I could say it was, well, look, actually, like, this group of people who were conservatives shared it really widely in these seven groups, which sent a signal to their algorithm to show it to your mom. Right, and, and this is, uh, I mean, obviously, you know, you came from BuzzFeed and I worked at The Daily Caller, you know, we chase traffic like kind of all the time and, and trying to figure that out can be quite maddening. What are some of the observations that you bring, you know, having run a digital news organization with that kind of incentive there to, and your frustrations kind of dealing with Facebook over the years and what transparency could have meant to you whenever you were running that business? Oh, you know, I don't really have a lot of complaints. I mean, I do think that, underlying, I mean, I think that, that transparency is important. I think it would be really valuable. I think it would allow journalists in particular and other analysts to sort of catch things that Facebook, the company, is not catching. Um, I also think, you know, a big underlying issue is that a lot of people have crazy beliefs and like to share them. Right. And that's not something you can fix with Facebook. Yeah, it's right. Not. I but it's I mean, point. I think it's it's interesting, though, you focus on the transparency piece rather than the sort of bigness piece, because that's the other issue here is like, you know, if if one of these companies is privileging certain content over others, it has obviously a massive impact because they're just so large. So um, what do you make of that piece of like this is even if you have transparency, it's still going to be uh, an undesirable system just simply because of the amount of power that they have? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think I think that's definitely a huge part of it. My colleague Charlie Warzel wrote recently just about how I mean I think Facebook is just obviously too big for Facebook to really understand. I mean, it's, it's, you can't get into the idea of a billion billions of people is is you know very hard to understand. If it were you know we are skimming the very surface of a sort of misinformation in American politics, and lots of the most powerful and sort of well resourced organizations in the world are focused on that, and we know a little about it. I mean. You know, imagine. You know, I suspect like the quality of information, you know, around like gardening in Nepal is not good. Like, you know, I mean, like there, you know, like it's, you know, I think there are these huge issues that do have to do with Facebook's inability to wrap its own arms around what's going on. Yeah, think very important point. Well, Ben, it's really interesting to talk to you on this. Really appreciate you joining us. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, thanks. For having me. Of course. We'll have more rising for you after this.